Hello, it's Markham Torch, Chief Markham 3D, and today we're going to be creating some game assets to replace these cameras, spotlights. So let's get into Blender. So let's now block out how I'm actually going to do this. Let's delete the default cube. Shift A. I'm going to start off by adding in a cylinder, and let's scale that down. From here, I'm going to make the second part a sphere, and let's G move that down. Come into side view. Select the middle with Alt right click, V to rip, select the top, delete vertices. And let's now grab all and we'll bring that up in here, scale it in. So this is what the camera is going to look like. And from here, let's just shift D to duplicate that, scale this in, scale on the Z to make it a little bit longer. And from here, rotate it. And so it's going to be something like that. However, let's make it a little bit more fancy. The way we're going to rig it is this part here will be stationary and the lens will be parented to the sphere. And so then that way, when I go rotate Z, it kind of rotates like that. Very straightforward. So let's get into that puppy. So from here, I'm going to select this search shade smooth. There we go come down into our object data, normal, auto smooth. So we get that nice um, hard edge, but I'm gonna put a bevel on it. Come here into this face. I'm gonna press do I to do an inset, select about here and E to extrude. So it kind of sits in there. I'm gonna delete that face inside because we don't need it. This cylinder, what can we do here? Let's start off by searching shade smooth. Let's put sh smooth surface on that. So we kind of got this sphere. And what are we going to work on this one? So let's start off. What I will do is I'm going to delete all that and I'm going to add in a new cylinder. And the reason for that is, is now I get to work just on creating the lens and it's at the right angle and I'll come back and move it a little bit later. So from here, let's do I to do an inset. Let's extrude in do another inset and then we'll bring it out like that. From here, I'm going to do control B to do a bevel. And then, so we kind of got a lens scale on the Z, bring that down. <laughs> this is super high poly for what it needs to be, but I'm not too fast. Shade smooth that again, auto smooth. And so we've kind of got already this lens. Am I happy with that lens? Sure, why not? From here, let's rotate this down. Scale on the Z normal. Can I scale on XX? Let's go 0.5. Scale YY, 0.5. Seems a little bit too small. So let's scale YY. 1.5 scale XX 1.5. So doing the double tap will scale on the normals. And because I rotated it while we're in object mode rather than edit mode, I can use that data. I do think it's a little far out. So let's bring that in. There we go. How does that look to me? That doesn't look too bad. seems very bland though. Since this is going to be a very short game, I'm not too concerned about the vertice count, but I probably should have done, um, I should have cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm just going to butcher it. So let's now just go in and start tidying up and getting rid of unwanted faces. So I'm going to do control R to put in edge loop. And from about here, let's go into wireframe mode, V to rip, control L delete vertices. And let's now just start splitting this up a little bit. I think we might go uh, into edge mode one here. Am I picking? Just seeing if I'm picking anything. Let's go from top view and I'm going to select our cylinder and I mean our sphere and let's select these two. I'm going to press control E. This is going to be a seam. And I will do that the same here as well. So let's select this. So let's keep it consistent and control E mark seam. Now let's come up into UV editing and let's just have a look what that seam looks like. And let's just get rid of that top face because we don't need that as well. That's just wasted space. 
we go U, U, and let's go unwrap. And that gives us some very clean data, which is pretty good. Let's come down into here and we'll do the same. U, unwrap. We got some pretty clean data as well. And what are we gonna do with the camera? Let's do exactly the same. I'm just gonna grab quarters. Control E, mark scene. Let's go unwrap. And that turned out not too bad. From here, what I can do is I can select all three objects, control J, and then I can select everything, U, unwrap, and we've kind of got this. And now from here, what we should do is kind of, you know, scale everything up. Whoops, control Z, scale 1.5, select everything 1.5, and I reckon we could probably fit that in and, you know, uh, try and maximize the space. However, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm going to use UV Pack Master, which is an add-on that's available on Gumroad. UV Pack Master, let's go and click Pack. There we go. Apparently that's the maximum, uh, that's the optimal uh, UV layout. However, I reckon if I get rid of this, Control E, Mark Seam, and now we select everything again and Pack. Apparently not. So let's come up here and I'm going to cut this up a little bit because I reckon that it it should be more optimal than that. Let's come here. Control E, mark seam. Let's select everything. U, unwrap. And then we go pack. There we go. That's a little bit better. So let's go with that. Now from here, I'm going to start assigning materials. So let's go back up into layout, I guess. I'm going to press N. And we can go through and create a whole bunch of materials however we want. But I'm just going to quickly use KitOps. And this, uh, sorry, EV library, I believe I'm using. There's another link in the description for this, um, this material here. Let's add in some materials, come into the materials down here, new, and I'm gonna press plus again. So let's find a color. Um, I would like this to be some sort of uh, plastic, maybe something like this. Let's insert, maybe something like this. There we go. Uh, from here, I'm going to come back up into shading and we've got this orange come down back into my materials. Let's add in another material. However, I don't want this to be orange. I kind of want this to be a black or a grayish color. Yep. That's fine. This lens in here. So let's just come in here and we will go V to rip. And that way I can just do control L. Let's add in a new material and this will be kind of like a glass shader. So we'll change this over to glass. We need to assign the material. Um, and let's make this just a black color. Beautiful. Let's go into Eevee, just see what it looks like. Uh, let's bring the shine down and maybe just so it kind of looks like this. Well, actually what we might do is rather than that, let's add in a emission and we'll throw that into the surface there. A strength of three, beautiful. I do want this up here to be some sort of white. So let's control L on that. I'm just gonna create, whoops, just gonna come back up here, assign it to that one. <laughs> Maybe I should just keep it white. I feel, I feel I can add a little bit more in here. So let's do control L, uh, do an edge loop, put it in here. I'm gonna go control B and let's uh, sign it here. And I'm gonna make a red material. Might as well make it a Canon Pro lens. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it as that. From here, I need to create a material that, oops. I need to just create a material that's going to sit there. And from here now, I want to bake everything into our UV textures. So if we select everything here, we kind of want to bake those colors. Back into our shading, I'm now going to add in a image texture. And we're going to create a new, let's just make it 2K, uh, 20, oops, 2048. Camera. Okay, and let's just copy this and we will put it in 
each of the nodes. Beautiful. From our render engine, we're going to change to cycles. And now we've got the bake option down the bottom. Let's go the diffuse and bake. And I've disabled direct and indirect lighting as well. And this is what we've got. A little bit of an orange tinge. I'm assuming that if we come back into the material here of bevel bake, that's the color we've got. So let's bring that back into the middle there as I want a bit of a gray color. The white is fine. Actually, let's come back into here and I want this to be a lighter gray and I'm just gonna rebake that. So let's have a look at our texture here in the bottom left. I'm just gonna move this up and that is pretty much what we're after. So make sure once we've baked it, we go image and we save that image as and camera underscore D for diffuse. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start baking other stuff. Let's do our emission or emit. And so this is obviously the lens that it's emitting light. Make sure we save once again, camera E. While we're at it, we can do an ambient occlusion. So let's bake that. There's that ambient occlusion. So make sure we save that one as well under AO. And one last thing, let's just do glossy just for the sake of it and bake. And apparently that's all glossy. Let's go image save as camera S. So let's now divide up what we're actually gonna have as our assets. So let's just bring this back down and around actually. So this top part here isn't going to move. So let's select what's not gonna move, P separate by selection. And we're gonna go file, export, FBX. It's selected only because we wanna only select that top bit. And we're gonna put in camera top. And from here, gonna select that bottom half, file, export, FBX, selected objects is enabled. And this would be camera bottom. Now we come into Unreal and I'm gonna get our six assets and bring that down into this asset window here. I'm just gonna go import all. From here, we've got our four materials. Let's now get rid of them because it's all gonna be one. And we will just quickly create a new material and we'll call this Matt underscore camera. Let's crack this open, put it to the side. I'm gonna grab our four textures and bring it in. And it's fairly straightforward, almost like Blender. So what have we got here? This is our emission, emissive color. We have our diffuse. We have our ambient occlusion and we have our glossy specular. With our emission color, we need to add in a constant. And also now let's multiply those value, values to get that strength in, so multiply. And let's bring this one in here, this one in here. Let's change one to five-ish, five. And then we'll put that in the emissive color. And then hopefully that'll come out nice and bright. There we go, so now we can see it flaring up a little bit. Save, let's close that. Now let's go into our blueprint for our camera. And from here, let's find where it is. We've got our cylinder. I'm gonna right click and let's duplicate that. And this cylinder is gonna sit underneath. So from here, this is our mesh. We're gonna change this to camera top. This one here will be camera bottom. And you can see how everything's kind of just snapped into place. Brilliant. Now let's have a look at our lights. See our lights a little bit off. I think these are probably a little bit too big. So let's scale these, uh, this top one by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. And what does our cylinder look like now? So that seems a lot better. Beautiful, compile. And if we come in here, we can see what our cameras look like. And that actually looks not too bad. So if I press play, and with this, we've got to wait 12 seconds and we can't really see, there's no emissive light. And that's because I didn't add in the material. So let's come back into our mesh. And this has our four slots, which I've made the mistake. 
So let's come back in here and remove all these materials, file, export, FBX. This one's camera bottom, select the top. Let's remove these three materials, file, export, FBX, camera top, export. Let's come back into Unreal. And what I can do is I can select these two and select re-import, um, re-import. Beautiful, reset. And now I've got the one material. Let's come over to here and we'll type in camera. Oh, that's looking nice. And let's select the top half camera. Beautiful. And we got to click save on both of them. And so hopefully when I press play, it's going to make a liar out of me. Come back into our blueprint and change this to camera and this bottom half to camera as well. Save. And if we have a look now, this is what our cameras look like. It's not too shabby. So if you like this kind of tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And if there's anything else you would like to know, please let me know. Uh, one last thing, what I will do is come back into our camera, uh, into our blueprint. Where's our light? So our light seems to be hitting going through the mesh and causing some weird artifacts. So let's go turn that off and I'm just going to move it up. So it's just sitting on top, compile, save. And there we go. And to me, that looks pretty good. So there you have it. I've created a camera that we've put in a game engine. We've textured it, we've UV unwrapped it and got it into the game engine. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps you up to date with any of my content.